G'day and welcome to the GCN Tech Show. I've made it back from the tour down under, even though the race is still on. That was quick. Yeah. All right, this week we've got loads, including what is potentially a new self-charging electronic rear mech from SRAM, Giro's latest top-end road helmet, and a hack that you can use on your cleats to make yourself faster, as well as our main talking point this week, which is what? Even more hot tech from the tour down under. Even Cheers. more? Even more. The Tour Down Under, the first World Tour race of the year. It's in full swing. Yeah. Heading towards a climactic finish at the, uh, well, over on GCN Plus if you want to watch it this weekend. It is indeed, yeah. Uh, but Alex has made it back, I'm glad to say, in time for this week's show. Are you going back after the show? No, I'm, I'm staying put here now in the UK, back at GCN Megabase. I'm glad to be back and be with you, mate. Yeah, I've missed you. Um, but yeah, so I was out of Tour Down Under. It was incredible having a look at all of the different bikes and the components that the teams are using. But as good as that was, there was so much stuff that we couldn't fit it all into our hot tech video, which was out on the weekend. So if you haven't seen that video, have a look at that first. But then any of the extra cool tech and gadgets that didn't squeeze into that video, we're going to go through them now, shall we? Yeah, it's really cool this actually, because being the first World Tour race of the year, you get a lot of new tech that kind of breaks cover. Yeah. And also you've got like new bikes for the season and riders that have switched teams and then, you know, they've got their new setups and stuff as well. So it's often a lot of really interesting things to see. Well, I saw it all firsthand. Um, should we have a little VT of the stuff that didn't make the cut? Play the tape. Now, even though the bikes of Bora Hansgrohe remain unchanged for the 2023 season, something which I have noticed is the text on the inside of the fork leg. It says no off season. Now, the mechanics told me there were zero changes to their bikes, but I can't say I've ever noticed this before. And if this um, slogan was on the inside of the fork leg last year, I'm actually incredibly disappointed that I didn't notice it. But um, Well, I hope you can see it. It's quite hard to see, hence why my face is literally rammed up against the front wheel. Hmm. So I've just got my hands on what appears to be a brand new unreleased look bike. I managed to convince the team mechanics to uh, let me take it outside and show you guys. We've got the SRM Origin Crank. Cool little thing about this is that the crank arms at the ends have a little aluminium insert which can be undone and rotated into three different positions, which means you can choose between three different crank length options without having to buy completely new cranks. So you've got 170, 172.5, and then 175. Now I'm an absolute sucker for a cool aluminium anodized part on the bike. And this out front mount fitted to the Sedal Quickstep team bikes is really doing it for me. So it's anodized blue to match in with the color of the bike. And then laser etched in onto the top, we've got the Wolfpack logo, the Wolfpack text, and a cool striped pattern across the top. So this is actually a K-Edge mount and it holds the um, Garmin head units that the team are using. Oh, love that. So this is the BMC SLR01, the bike of AG2R Citroen. Three cool bits that I want to pick out on this bike, but before I get to those, I just want to point out the colorway. I really like this. It's a sort of sky baby blue with the red handlebar and a little section of red on the top tube, which I actually really like. And the way it fades between the two colors is super cool. Now, if we move over to the middle of the bike, we can see the two bottle cages. Nothing new about that, but the difference is on the seat tube, they're using the Elite Legero bottle cage made of carbon fiber. Whereas if we move to the down tube, it's a different bottle cage. So this is the BMC sort of factory edition bottle cage, which has an aero finish to it and sits really flush against the frame. You can see if you look really closely that there's no gap between the bottle cage, the bottle and the frame. So really incorporated nicely and a sleek design there. And it's the first time I think I've seen teams start to move towards aero bottle cages. So the Yumbo Visma mechanics have been kept busy at the start of the year. Even more change for the riders for 2023. We've got new pedals and new shoes. So they're now using the new Wahoo pedals. The ones fit as Rowan Dennis's bike are the aero version. And when it comes to shoes, they've got these from Nimble and the riders have got two different options, either the lace up ones like this or set with boa dials. Oh, these are nice. They've got a really nice carbon sole, which is molded all the way up and round the ankle of the foot to give a nice secure fit. Hmm. Take one look at this bike from the Alps in De Koenig team and I think you can probably guess what it is that I'm going to talk about. Oh my, this paint job is incredible. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to call it, but after much consideration, 
Um, I'm going to go with iridescent purple. Majority of the bike is gloss. However, on the top tube and a little section of the head tube, it's got a matte finish. This is incredible. Do you know what? If I could have any colour bike, this would be what I would choose. Um, it's the bike of Robert Stannard. Minimal changes for Alberson de Koenig this year with their equipment lineup. But, oh my, this bike's going to stand out in the peloton. Absolutely love it. So this is the Trek Madon SLR, newly crowned women's Australian road race champion, Brody Chapman. Now, as impressive as this bike is, it's kind of run of the mill for the women's world tour peloton. But one small detail I have noticed is when you look down on the center of the hubs, they've got a Kogel sticker on. Now, Kogel are a brand renowned for making ceramic bearings. And it's interesting to see that the team have opted to switch out the standard Bontrager ones for these ceramic bearings. Now, it's a small advantage to be had doing this. And a lot of that comes from using the low drag seals in the bearings as opposed to just the ceramic bearings themselves. But um, yeah, well, it's all about those little marginal gains when you're racing at the very highest level. Now, even though the men's Trek Segafredo team have got exactly the same bike setups as the women, barring the colour, obviously, interestingly, they've opted not to use ceramic bearings in their wheels, so it appears that deal is only with the women's team. Okay, cool. How good was that, seeing all of the different um, bits of extra hot tech and stuff? I love all of those details. I don't know if you spotted or if anyone else noticed, actually, but in the hot tech video, I wore a selection of different t-shirts yeah. because, well, it was hot, sweaty, and we filmed over a couple of different days. I don't think anyone noticed that yet. Oh, it's three so to four. It wasn't three to four. Um, you're going to you're gonna have to have a fun game. Don't, don't try and give the clues away. I always try and have a bit of fun there. Uh, go to watch the video, comment down below, guess how many different t-shirts I wore. It might not have been three to four. <laughs> on a more sensible note you also wanted to talk about um some of the tech that you've spotted in the prologue um, yeah but like well the first question i'd add for you is what how many teams are still using tubular tires this year that's a good question um i'm gonna say <laughs> not it's not three to four um, i think i think it's five okay a team okay uh, continental tubular tires um Cofidis, i think are on tubular EF Education, whilst they're using tubeless, they still have a tubular option for the riders. Jayco Allure, which was Green Edge previously, have got Victoria tubular tyres. Starner as well, so that's five. I mean, the, the, all these teams clearly haven't watched our video with Dan Bigham, yeah. where he basically says that it's a huge disadvantage in terms of rolling resistance to be using the tubulars. Um, well, that'd be why the Ineos riders were using tubeless. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's interesting. I, so in the prologue time trial, which yeah. was the road bike only time trial. We spoke about this ages ago, didn't we? Yeah, it was yeah. pretty interesting seeing how, well, again, you had this stupid thing of the UCI, uh, UCI reach around on full display here. Yeah. With the, the so in, in you're not allowed to use the puppy paws position with your hands over the bars. That's banned in road racing. But there's a caveat that it's not banned in time trials. Yeah. But you needed to be touching the brake lever hoods. The, the pictures I've seen so, so far So people were like riding like this with one little finger pinky yeah. over on the brake lever hoods or whatever it was. It was yeah. just ridiculous. I saw one rider, um, coming who it was, that had their hands crossed over right. and had their index finger pointing onto the levers like that. It looks like me when I make a, a face for a thumbnail image for a video like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the most extreme position I saw though was uh, Pelo Bilbao. Yeah. So riding for Byron Victorious, he had um, a one by Shimano 12 speed setup on wow, his bike. Yeah. Quite interesting. Yeah. He turned his bike into sort of one by time trial the setup. Mechanics kept that hidden from me. But the craziest thing much. was his tiny little narrow handlebar he was using with his levers pointed right in. I mean, they're almost horizontal. Yeah. So ridiculous. that he's on the on the the hoods, like riding in that puppy paw position. It's like a time trial position, holding onto yeah. his hoods like this. Absolutely ridiculous. Right then, Ollie, it's now time for hot and spicy tech. And then first up this week, we've got some low stack adapters from Watchshop. Um, tell us a little bit more about them, shall you? Yeah, so yeah. We've, we've been sent these because um, we're going to put them on your shoes for the National Track Champs Fantastic. we're going to be doing. They've been around a while, but yeah. I wanted to show the viewers because they're not that well known about. But I think they're a really cool piece of tech. So what they are is a sort of 3D printed... Um, Base, sort of plate. base plate yeah. there that you mount onto the bottom of your shoe and in doing so it creates uh, a mounting platform for a four bolt uh, Wahoo speed plate cleat yeah 
and it removes the need for the standard um, conversion plate you need to go from a three bolt cleat to a four bolt cleat. Yep. <clears throat> and in doing so, this reduces the stack height of the cleat interface. So which when you say the stack height, that is between the base of the shoe and the pedal axle. Yes. Yeah? Now, this means that by reducing the stack height, you can crucially reduce your saddle height, which means yeah. that you're lower and you can get more aerodynamic. There's potentially a, a biomechanical gain, but that's harder to, to quantify. But, you know, this is actually quite a significant aero gain that, that you can make. Sounds fantastic. I mean, sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to take a bit more than a aero low stack adapter to help me out, but I'll take every little saving I can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to give some context as, as to sort of what they're able to achieve. Um, I've got some numbers written down from different oh, cleat systems. the numbers. So this is getting nerdy now. But the stack height of a Look Keo pedal system yeah. is 17.1 millimeters. Okay. Shimano SPDs, really popular, 13.7 yeah. millimeters. Now a standard uh, speed play setup, so like you've got on, on your shoe here, shoes, yeah. that's actually already one of the lower stack pedal systems. So it's 11.5 millimeters. Quite a difference between those. But that's those. using that conversion mounting yeah. plate that goes from three bolt to four bolt. Yeah. Using this on the bottom of your shoe, it drops it to 8.5 millimeters. So you're saving three millimeters. So that, does that directly relate to three millimeters lower saddle? Uh, yeah. Oh, so which is great So you can run your saddle three mil lower. Which doesn't sound like much, but you know that's conceivably a, a couple of watts yeah. um, that you can save in aero by being that little bit lower, and you know that's a couple of watts is hugely significant in in a pursuit. Well, let's see if I can get brave enough to um, drill and fit these onto my shoes. Yeah, I like the look at that. Oh, yeah, thanks so much. Um, next up in hot tech, we have news of a new helmet from Giro. So this is the new Giro Aeris Spherical, and it's said to be lighter and cooler than the Giro Aether, which was previously their top performing race helmet. And when I say cooler, I don't mean in terms of, oh, it looks cool, but the way it cools <laughs> your head. Um, and as well as that, it's said to be their safest helmet to date. Well, of course, they would say that. And no one brings out a new bike and says that it's like heavier, <laughs> less stiff and less aero than the previous one. Yeah. But it has been independently backed up, this claim, by Virginia Tech. Now, Virginia Tech is the leading authority on helmet safety testing. Yeah. Um, and they test like every single bike helmet, even like super cheap ones that come out. And they rank the new Aries Spherical as the safest helmet they've ever tested. Really? Yeah. The safest one Rank ever. number one. That's, that's, that's actually quite funny because mm. um, I think when people are going out and thinking, right, I'm going to buy a new bike helmet, safety, I don't think, is the number one thing that people are looking at and the characteristic. <laughs> often you're looking at how light it is, whether you think it looks good or how fast it is. And yeah. Safety, I feel like... It's his primary goal. Yeah, I feel like it falls down the, the priority list. Yeah. I'm, I'm victim of that too. Never have I gone to a bike shop and looked at the different helmets and asked about the safety rating. I've just gone, oh, surely they're all safe enough. Yeah, it, it's weird that, isn't it? <laughs> yes, when it is its primary it. purpose. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's other tech built in there too. Uh, so it has this new uh, dry core system built in, which is like a, a sort of sweat management system with like an it. internal silicone bead that's designed to channel sweat away from your brow uh, so that you don't have annoying sweat beading up and dripping into your eyes, which yeah. is can be really annoying when it gets really hot. Dreadful, yeah. Yeah, and then it's also been developed with a lot of heat management um, built into it, isn't it? Yeah. And, and, and that's part of the design process. This is interesting because it's something that I think is gonna be a big tech trend for bike clothing and helmets in this year. Okay. Because, it, you know, sports scientists have become increasingly aware of the detrimental impact of overheating. Yeah. And so, you know, at the tour last year, we saw the riders chucking water over themselves and ice, and we saw this in the hour records as well, you know, trying to keep riders cool. And Giro has been switched on to this for quite a while because they have this thing called the Therminator. <laughs> The Terminator? Yes. What's this, um, the Terminator's brother, sister? Yeah, it's like the, the Terminator's <laughs> brother that's obsessed with heat management. Okay. Right? Yeah. So what what this device does is it measures the amount of sort of thermal conductivity and heat buildup in the head of a, yeah. of a rider and, and they test it in various ways. But uh, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. That is interesting. I think it's said to be faster as well. So 
it's 4% more aero than the Aether apparently too. And Giro say a proportion of this is down to the fact it's a smaller silhouette, which presents a smaller frontal area to help improve your aerodynamics. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? Just reducing yeah. the overall silhouette, the overall frontal area. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. Um, now, if you like the look of this helmet, it's actually available to buy now, if that's sort of your sort of thing. I think it looks cool. Yeah, I like, I like that. Um, next up in hot tech is this self-charging derailleur, which you spoke of at the start of the show. So these images are taken from a patent which has been filed by SRAM. So yeah. this isn't anything that's in production at the moment. It's common that bicycle companies put out patents and stuff just to kind of cover the basis. Of Some cool, that they don't even use. Yeah, of cool ideas that, that they've had. Like Shimano has loads of patents. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's an interesting idea. So this is for a mountain bike rear derailleur. And the idea is that, yes, instead of having all the issues associated with having to charge your battery or your battery running flat, that wouldn't be a problem with this because you can charge it's yourself. It's self-charging. So interesting there, you say that um, you think it's aimed towards a mountain bike derailleur, but that's just basing it off of the schematic drawings that we've seen. So there is nothing to say whether it's for mountain bike, road or gravel. So the, the technology that the patent is revolving around is the self-charging unit. So I've done a little bit of research into this yesterday because, well, I had some spare time on my hands, should I say, um, and I did a lot of the reading. So it would appear that the patent involves a small generator built into the derailleur, which is then powered um, via a series of gears from the top pulley wheel. So a dynamo Effectively, on the top pulley wheel. Yeah, now there's lots of little, little details into the patent because well, they're very complicated, but it also shows uh, and mentions the talk of a clutch design because obviously when we're pedaling forwards, the generator needs to turn in a certain direction to generate the electricity to store it within a derailleur so that it's got the power to use. But we don't always pedal forwards on our bikes, which means if you pedaled backwards and the generator wasn't disengaged, then you could start creating all sorts of havoc and having reverse polarity issues and all sorts of stuff like that. Other than you said reverse the polarity. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Um, so yeah, basically there's there's the details about it. I don't know everything possible, but that is the crux of it. Mm. It's um, interesting, so many questions. Lots of questions. Because I, the first thing I think is what would it do to the drivetrain efficiency? Because yes. dynamos are less efficient. You're, you're adding resistance into, the, into a system whenever you put a dynamo in. So that, is it gonna, yeah. 100% it is gonna impact the drivetrain efficiency. There's, uh, there's absolutely no way that you can generate power from nothing. It's gotta come from somewhere. Um, so in that instance, it does make me think this might not be a product that is initially geared towards the racing end of, of the sport because that's where companies will spend thousands and thousands of dollars and years of research to save a couple of watts and by adding a generator onto the derailleur instead of just charging up a small battery, it feels like you've lost a lot of those gains. Mm. Um, but nonetheless, I do like the look of this, and it's something that I feel could be really beneficial for a large proportion of people that go out cycling. It's now time for comments of the week. Oh, it's my second favorite part of the show after the bike vault. Now, I actually watched last week's show with you and Manon. Yeah. Great show, by the way, I really loved it. Oh, thanks. Um, what's this beatboxing stuff about then? I think we need to get the editor to remix Manon's beatboxing and put it in again. That, uh, that could make my day incredible. Yeah, go for it. Um, hit it. It's coming to the way. Now, interestingly, the first comment that we haven't actually got on our list here, someone commented last week saying that you and I don't like each other. What's that all about? Yeah, I saw that, yeah. You, you sent it to me, actually. Screen yeah, no, I screenshot it, <laughs> sent it to me. <laughs> oh. Well, we're, we're best buds. Yeah, love it. Um, I'm glad you're back. I don't know how anyone even, even comes to that conclusion. Okay. Um, right, anyway. shall we dive into the first comments? Uh, Brian. Brian Kavanagh, best presenting combination. Man on an Ollie. Way to go, guys. What's that all about then? I don't we're know. the best. Hmm. Whatever, right, next comment. Um, Sean Thomas, Manon is more awesome than ever, but the beatboxing, OMG, made me literally LOL. Thanks both, made my week. Oh, good job. Uh, a lot of people, that Manon's beatboxing went down quite well. There was another comment where um, this guy, Stephen Kyle, he actually wrote a little rap for Manon. <laughs> no way. For her to deliver. <clears throat> 
My name is Manon. I'm here to say I like track riding in a major way. I'm here with Ollie. He used to get drop, and everyone knows the press fit was a flop. That's actually amazing. I think we need to get Manon to, to actually wrap that. What we'll do is um, we'll WhatsApp Manon after the show. She can film on her phone and we'll try and get it in the show. Thanks, Manon. Thanks in advance. Yeah. Always thinking of um, the viewers. Right, so underneath the bikes of the World Tour video that went out last weekend, yep. where we took a quick fire look at all of the different um, equipment and setups, HRH Bucket commented, I've got no changes this year. I'm going to be using a Trek 720 or 720 trekking for commuting and a B Twin Tri Band 3 for bike tours. The mechanic, brackets me, had a fairly quiet winter, just tightening the bearings on the front wheel, a smidgen, and clean up of the dry train. Like it. I liked that. That was one of my favourite comments I've seen for a while. So um, maybe everyone should comment underneath this video and let us know what your setup is for the 2023 season. Yeah. Be that the commuting season, race season. Or just whatever bike you're riding. Let's know in the comment section down below. Um, Hotcakes also said, don't forget the sunscreen, Alex, and go with John Canning's on us. So I heard about this. Apparently Canning's refused to wear sun cream for the, the first time. Yeah. got very sunburned. I had Factor 50 on every single day. Yeah. Um, I Sensible. I, I think I did an alright job. Um, CPL Craft Drives says, yo, GCM, <coughs> what's the ETA on the next paint job video by Ollie? It's been delayed. Um, but it is incoming. Um, yeah, I mean, it. you're the person to ask about it. Yeah. Uh, it the first, well, the ice effect didn't go as planned to begin with, so I'm, I'm redoing it. But I've got it all on camera so you can see how I messed up. Anyway. That's good. Yeah. There's a really interesting story I want to tell everyone, but <clears throat> I'm going to hold it back. <laughs> all about Ollie's painting. Yeah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Okay. It's fine. Okay, Dave is saying, Aero socks, are you even kidding me? Um, you're promoting cycling stuff for racers instead of the average cycling enthusiast. You need to make that very clear. They'll probably give you one thousandth of a second benefit in a race, but how about cycling to a friend's place, get groceries, or simply to go for a pleasurable ride? Um, start focusing on actual cycling stuff instead of promoting racing so much. Oh, hmm. what's that all about then? Well, I don't know, but I, the we thing... We try and do a bit of both. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we love all cycling stuff, yeah. and we cater for a, a wide audience here at GCN, and I am a big fan of, like, of, of the cutting-edge tech and stuff. Yeah. Aero socks actually give more benefit than a thousandth of a second. And, you know, while they may not be relevant to, to everyone, and not yeah. everyone might not want to wear them, it's kind of, I see it as a bit like Formula One. Yeah. I don't drive a Formula One car, but I love hearing about the, the tech yeah. that makes them go faster. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Dave. I disagree yeah. sorry with Sorry it's you not for you, man. But yeah. um, hopefully plenty of other stuff we do is. Yeah. And you and, well, a lot of our viewers do like this stuff. Yeah. Um, anyway. Right. It's now time for the bike vault, my favourite part of the show. Um, the bell's ready. If you're not familiar with how the bike vault works, where well, you upload a picture of your bike onto the GCN app, and then the GCN app users convert it nice or super nice, and then Ollie and I pick some out. We do exactly the same. Yeah, ultimately, ours is the, the say that counts. The, the most. final decision makers. Which brings me on to our most super nice bike in the app from yes. last week, which is this Canyon Air Road by Sebaduan. Sebaduan. Um, I like Alex, this. You like it, do you? It looks... Do you really? Do you really like well, that? Well, I like it. The handlebars aren't straight, the bike's propped up against the wall, the crank's on level, it's in the wrong gear, the valves aren't It's right. all over the shop. It's <clears> all over the shop. It's a nice. Um, we have the casting vote, so um, it's nice. nice. All over the shop. What are people thinking when they voted on that? Unbelievable. Well, they were not thinking straight, were they? Julian <clears throat> on crits yes. is next. He loves crits. <laughs> he does. And this is his Teddy Dolan precursor. That's oh, a track bike. Oh, so it's like fixed, fixed gear, gear crack racing. Crit. Cool. Mm. What do you make of that? Um, John's the angle, very hard to see the bike. Um, cranks were aligned, but aligned the sort of wrong way as such. Minimal accessories, which is a good thing. Mm. Uh, valves aren't aligned. I'm afraid it's a nice for me. Yeah, I'll go nice, yeah. Yeah. Nice, we have to agree. Yeah. Next uh, in is from Iskandar44. With a Gunnar Sport. Oh, what's a Gunnar Sport? That. Oh, I quite like that. I like it. it looks like an everyday, real sensible, do-it-all bike. A good, clear background, well presented. Yeah. Gubbins removed. Nice, just 
just really well presented. That's yeah. a cracking steed. <clears throat> I'm going to nice it. it. Super nice. Super nice. Oh, the bell needs a bit of warming up then. Ooh. Tim Shepard, 475, <laughs> yeah. is next with his Planet X Nanolite. From 2010. I nearly bought one of those. Did you? Yeah. Look at those big, deep boy wheels. They were all the rage. I mean, it's weird, isn't it? Big, deep, yeah. massive, deep sections like that. <laughs> yeah. they've, they've, they've gone out of fashion, but yeah. definitely around like 2010, 2012, yeah. they were like all the rage. Like, Cav used to have like massive 808s, didn't he? Honestly. I'd have given an arm and leg to have some wheels like that. But people were like sprinting on Zip 808s. <laughs> yeah. and, you and you can still legally use them, but no one sprints on 808s anymore. No yeah. pros are using 808s in the bunch. Remember there, was there, it was a 1080 that he also did for the rear, specifically. 1080, yeah, yeah even deeper at the back. <laughs> Spokes are like this long. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, I feel like we've gone off track here slightly. Like we both got excited about the deep wheels. Um, Cranks aren't aligned, it is in the correct gear. Valves uh, are not aligned, but are opposites. I really want to like this bike. Well, I do like it, but I think it's going to have to be a nice. I just think, I think when you've got wheels that deep, you really need <laughs> you've to, to line you've up. got to align them up because they're such <laughs> yeah. a prominent feature of the bike. Just a nice? Yeah, we'll it's go nice. nice on that one. Uh, next in is Moots. Moots 0618 with the Cube Attain race from 2022. Is this a photo of a photo or just a crazy it effect? It looks rubbish, doesn't it? Why has it got like an Instagram filter on it? I don't know, maybe it's just got a really rubbish camera. It's like uh, a camera phone from like... <laughs> yesteryear. From like 20 years ago. <laughs> it's taken on like a Nokia 3310. Yeah. Oh, that didn't have a camera on it. Um, very, very jaunty angle, I must say. Biggie big, yeah. um, black chain. I mean, it might be a black chain, Valve's but it's just not dirty. Aligned. Um, big massive big chimney. chimney. It's all over the shop. Yeah, it's a no from us. Yeah. Next in is Caleb underscore NZ with a Cervelo R3 from 2015. Oh. Hold on. Is that is that a shadow stand or a homemade shadow stand? Oh. It looks like a a homemade one. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Or a shadow stick. A shadow stick. <laughs> No, no. Um, I like the. I like the bike. I like it's the aligned the wheels and stuff. I think I've seen this one before. Really? Yeah. Where have you seen this bike before? I think we've had it in before. In the bike vault. Oh. Oh, I've had a look at it before. Before. Anyway, um, it's. I mean, it's a nicely mowed lawn, but yeah. the the weird sort of boco Instagram filter effect. I'm not a fan of because <laughs> if you look through the around the wheels you yeah. can see that that depth of field is f is fake um like oh, we are getting into the real nitty-gritty here though i know but it just kind of ruins it a little bit I, um what are you thinking share your thoughts with me i'm not a fan of that bar tape i, I literally love the bar tape but do you oh, that's all right don't worry about it I mean, it's got a bit of a chimney here, i'll let it? you call this one you call oh, it nice it's nice uh, next in is from flow underscore shoe with a Pinello Dogma F 2022. This is an incredible bike, but what is going on with the picture? Took it in the dark. I'm having to turn the brightness up yeah, on Yeah, turn your brightness up on your screen. Whoa. Um, I think that's just underexposed, or he took it at night. I think Maybe it's more... Maybe that excited I haven't got a new bike. You like take a picture of it ASAP. It's really nice though, isn't it? Valve's aligned, it's in the correct gear, no unnecessary accessories. Oh, that is a... It is. I, I've not seen one in that colourway before, but that is a. I like that. It's like a, a battleship grey, but like gloss. Mm, God. Do you know? I, I want to vote this super nice, but I don't want to look like we've got double standards going on here. Well, it's only look. The, look. Let's be clear. The only infraction I can see here is that it's slightly dark, but time primarily of, we judge the bike. Time of day has never been a criteria we judge before, is it? I think. I'm willing to go super nice on that one. Super nice. Super nice bike. I need a maintenance Monday on the bell. And that was our last bike in the bike world oh. for this week. I'm glad we ended on a super nice. It makes me feel a lot happier being back from um, Australia. Feels like I've come back to night time in the UK. It's just constantly grey and gloomy. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, it's quite a shame. Anyway, I'm glad to be back. It's been fun being on the tech show. Hope you enjoyed it, having me back. And um, don't forget, let us know in the comments section down below, all of the things that we've asked you about throughout the show, because we've asked for lots of stuff, haven't we? Um, guess on the t-shirts as well, three to four, maybe more, five. 
<laughs> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> right, we're out of here. Oh, God. See you later. <laughs>